I'd like to plot the graph of y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. And um, remember, the graph is just a set of all the points whose coordinates x comma y satisfy, uh, satisfy this uh, relationship, where we've got the uh, x and the y axes here. Um, so, you know, we could just start playing around with this and investigating points. Now, uh, when, the, when an equation is in this form, it's just y equals some function of x, one way that works quite well just to generate some points is just to try out some different values of x. So maybe I might start at, uh, you know, x equals minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and just plug each of those in to work out uh, what the y coordinate is at each of those points. So, for example, at x equals 0, uh, we've got y equals 0 squared, which is 0, minus 4 times 0, plus 3, so y equals 3. So there's a point there, 0, uh, 3, and the table helps us kind of organize all this information. Uh, and to be kind of systematic about it, I suppose, if I wanted to put it, if I want to do x equals 1, um, I would do y equals 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times 1, uh, plus 3, which gives us uh, 0. Um, and I could do that for all of the all of the different values. Be a bit careful when you're substituting in negative values, because uh, if I do x equals minus two, say I need y equals x squared. That's minus two squared, minus four times minus two plus three, which gives four plus four because minus two squared is plus four. Minus four times minus two is plus eight, uh, plus three. Uh, so that gives me uh, fifteen. Actually, that's uh, gone off the scale of this graph, so I can't plot it on here. Um, now, one quick way to do this, and actually that avoids these sorts of errors you can make with substituting in, uh, you know, by mistake, is to use the calculator, but to use the and to use the table function on the calculator, because actually you can still make those. It's in some ways even easier to make those substitution errors on the calculator. If you do something like minus two squared, it'll tell you it's minus four, uh, but that's because the calculator has done two squared and then. Then done, then done, uh, made that negative. Whereas what you really want to do is minus two squared. Um, but we can actually get the calculator to do it all for us. So uh, here's how you do it. If you go to on this sort of calculator anyway, uh, if you go to mode three for table mode, it brings up f of x equals. So it's it's saying we've got some function of x that we're going to type in. And now we can use the you see the red x here. Uh, if we can use that, we can type in this function. So I could do alpha x to get the x, so the alpha, red alpha button gives you the red letters, so alpha x squared minus 4 uh, alpha x there plus 3. Um, so I, I've saved that function into the into the calculator now, and if I wanted to say, st so I want, I'm going to start at minus 2, I'm going to go up to 5, so using equals for enter, and the step is 1, the step is the, dis is the difference between each successive point, so I'm going up in 1s here, so that's the step. What it'll do is it'll just generate me a table uh, here. So it says uh, x equals minus 2, y equals 15, uh, x equals minus 1, y equals 8. So there you go, you need to work that one out. The other values, uh, we've got 3, 0, and it goes minus 1, 0, 3, 8. And there we go, I've been able to fill that table in really quickly. And now I can, um, now I can use that to, to plot this graph. So minus 1, 8, again, that's a bit off the... That's a bit off the top of um, top of my axes here, so let me just move that down. So let's say it's about a little about there. Um, one is zero. Um, zero. We've got at uh, three two at minus one. Three at zero. Four has y equals three, and five again has y equals eight off the top here. So you can see the graph looks something a little bit like that. Mine didn't quite go through three there. It should have done. Um, if you weren't sure exactly, of course, where. You know, where, it, where it finished here, you could um, you could work out some extra values like between you could go between minus one and three and, and reduce the step for something smaller on the table function. I'll just plug in a few few more values if, you, if you're not quite sure what it looks like at that point. Here's another example. Then, if I wanted to plot y equals x cubed plus three x squared minus four x, again it's in that nice y equals a function of x form. So I can get my table function back on the calculator again um, and type in uh, alpha x cubed plus 3x uh, squared minus 4x. Uh, now the gro the, I've got uh, axes here that start at minus 5 um, and they go up to 2, so let's do that. 
um, and if I leave the step at 1 we'll get a table straight away and I'll just plot on the values that I can. So minus 5 is down at minus 30, that's off the graph, actually I can't see that but I'm going to remember it end up, ends up going down here. Minus 4, at x equals minus 4 we've got y equals 0. Um, at minus 3 we've got uh, x equals 12. Um, looking further down we've got at minus 2 and we've got x equals 12 as well. Um, at m minus 1 we've got x equals 6. At uh, 0, uh, it's at 0. At uh, 1, it's at 0. Uh, and at 2, it's at 12. Uh, so, um, we've got a bit of a sense of, of what this function looks like. Um, so, it seems to start down here, kind of come up here, down here. If you weren't sure, you know, about exactly what it looked like in a particular area, we, you know, we might investigate, we might investigate further. Um, and uh, I just need to type that in again. Actually, you wouldn't need to type it in again if you just press uh, AC instead. That brings you back here. So uh, now to investigate between minus three and minus two, I could instead say, well, okay, what if I started at minus three and end at minus two? And rather than doing a step of one, I could do a step of 0 0.2 of one fifth. And now you see it's going to give me all the values in between minus three, minus 2.8, minus 2.6, minus 2.4, and it can give me. Uh, and, it, and it gives me further values, and we see um, uh, what happens to f of x. It actually gets a bit bigger before it gets smaller, so it goes up to about seems to go up to about 13, uh, 13 and a bit, and then come back down again. So you know, it looks like it's so it looks like in between here, it's doing something like doing something like that. And you know, you could investigate other bits as well. So I could say, okay, what happens between uh, zero and one? You know, maybe I'll do that in a step of 0 0.1, and it'll give me values. For every 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and again we see it goes down. Seems to go down to about minus 1. Point, uh, seems to go down to about minus 1.1 there. Uh, so you know, let's say it goes down to there somewhere. Um, and you know, that depending on what you're doing, you might want a more or less uh, accurate uh, sketch than this. But now we just uh, join join them up. Uh, but hopefully, you do it a bit more carefully than I've done it um, to get a nice smooth curve uh, of the graph of that function. So. Um, Sometimes we just draw the graphs because we know what they look like from previous examples, or we can just try out some values. If we've got something a bit complicated like this, where it's quite, it takes quite a lot of effort to find uh, values, and we've got it in this nice form, y equals a function of x, it can be much quicker to you know, just draw a table of values, plot lots of different x values, um, and uh, see what we come up with.